Hey everyone, today's video I wanted to talk about time to kill and first person shooters and I'm not going to waste any time, I'm going to get right into this. So there's a lot of misconceptions about this uh, topic and I just kind of want to clear it up because people aren't saying the things that, that I think. So I obviously need to represent myself. And before I do get into my points, my talking points, I do want to say I am a game developer and I have studied consumer psychology. So obviously understanding game design is going to inf uh, affect my opinion, but this also lines up with what I experience anecdotally. And I think this is going to line up with what most of you experience as well. So j just to summarize, my, my main point is that time to kill is not a positive or a or a bad thing like long time to kill is not bad it's not good either it's neutral right fast time to kill or long time to kill should be based off your game's design and and how it plays more specifically the pace of the combat so basically slower movement games you know games that give you less control of your movement like you know maybe you can't jump shot or slide and maybe your movement speed is not that fast those games benefit from slower time to kills fast paced games where you're running around benefit from faster time to kills and when this factor does not line up it creates very frustrating experiences so i'll give you an example the older call of duties uh, you know the golden age or whatever they were a bit fast paced but the time to kill was fast so they were pretty fun most of them anyways some of them might have been a little bit campy um halo is a game that has a slower time to kill but the movement speed is also you know a lot slower so that's another example and you know people like halo they said the gameplay in that game's great now let's look at uh three recent games modern warfare 2 is known as a very campy and slow played call of duty but as a fast time to kill people you know talk about how that game is caters to noobs too much and they die too easily but then mw3 is a faster paced call of duty and it has a long time to kill and people said the game's way too sweaty and you know it's funny because mw2 is considered the the worst you know most catering to noob call of duty game ever and mw3 is considered you know the most like sweaty call of duty game ever and we got them back to back so these are actually prime examples of the point i'm trying to illustrate and x defiant is a new game and i haven't tested the time to kill but it feels on a bit on the longer side and people are complaining that the game is very sweaty just like you know modern warfare 3 is and that's true so the reason why a fast time to kill in a slow paced game sucks is because when you're walking around, you know, it's taking longer to find people, you're not in the action as often, dying super fast feels bad. That's why when you're in a BR, for example, and you just get melted, it feels a lot worse than when you just get melted in a game where you're respawning fast. And that's the thing about long time to kill, is if the movement speed's really fast and you're getting into gunfights pretty fast, then, you know, you dying isn't a big of a deal because you just get right back into the action and you're expecting you know things to be chaotic so fast time to kill is actually good for you know dopamine and and just enjoying the game and also uh many people think that you want as big of a skill gap as possible but the truth is is that's a balancing act too you really don't want as big as a skill of a skill gap as possible because if you do then because it's the reason I say it's a balancing act, for example, is because if it the skill gap is too low, you do legitimately die by worse players than you, and that's just so frustrating dying by bullcrap all the time. But at the same time, if the skill gap is way too high, your matches will be super sweaty and and just absolutely miserable and unenjoyable because you can't relax. So you you do need to find a middle ground. You can't just you know make everything as competitive as possible unless you're trying to play the game competitively, right? And that's not what Call of Duty is about. And I don't think that's what the X Fine is trying to be about either. But so that's why I kind of just want to make it, you know, clear that, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about this topic and that one thing is just always better, but it's really not, right? Um, there's time to kill just belongs to certain games. And honestly, I feel like if MW2 had 150 health and MW3 had 100 health, they just swapped uh, rules that both games would drastically be better, right? And I've done my own tests in these games. I actually went to custom games. I put the health on 100, I put on 70, I put on 30 in MW3. And the game just felt much, much better. It just played so much better, you know? You know. And I actually did better too, because that's another thing about Long Time to Kill is Call of Duty is, the longer the time to kill is, right? And this isn't me saying that it's a bad thing, 
obviously, because I was just speaking about how it was neutral, but it, it it takes away individual performance and makes the game a bit more team-based, which Halo is, for example. The time to kill so long that you want to push your team at the same time so you can, you know, double beam a person and gun them down. So it does take away your, you know, individualistic performance because it's harder to squad wipe. Like when you get behind enemy lines and you're trying to flip spawns or whatever, and you're trying to spawn kill people, that's much harder because... I mean, first of all, you have to reload much more often because, you know, so your mag may only be able to kill one or two people. And then also, you know, it takes longer to kill someone so you can't swap over to the next target faster. And it, so, it, so it actually hurts you when you're trying to dominate a team. So I, in these matches, even though it should have increased uh, skill expression, it, it end, I end up doing overall worse the entire match. So longer time to kill, I find and this is just true universally, is that it actually only, it does increase skill, the skill gap, but it only increases it in 1v1 situations. If you're in a 1v2, and you're better than both of them, those those players, they have a they have a better chance of beating you with long time to kill, even though you're better, because you need to be able to put them down fast, and, you know, with and with Call of Duty and their smaller maps and stuff, it's, it's and, you know, people liking the spawn trap and, and stuff, especially in domination it's it's very easy to be in a position where you're fighting multiple attackers so that's also not very fun but that's just kind of like a, a bonus point um i didn't really need to say that but it's just something i wanted to get off my chest so uh thank you guys for watching this video i don't expect it to get a lot of views and also sorry if i uh, did bad in the sex fight match this is a live commentary and i'm not very good at multitasking but thank you for watching peace out